Welcome to the Huskies Hockey Insider Podcast. I'm Mick Hatton from The Rink Live, and I'm very happy to be joined by St. Cloud State senior forward Taylor Lind of the women's hockey team. How are you doing today, Taylor? Hey, Mick. Thank you for having me. I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Well, let's uh, let's start off by talking about uh, you know how things are going. Uh, you know, obviously it was a tall task last last weekend uh, at number one Ohio State, but uh, it, uh, you know just in looking at the box scores, it looked like uh, you know at at different points of that game, uh, both games actually, you guys were were pretty tight with them, huh? You know what? Yeah, with them since I've been here. Um, they were close games and I didn't think that the score reflected as well of the game as it was, but no, it was aggressive. It was good. It was really high paced. And I mean, I was happy with how we played. There were obviously a few breakdowns and as we're changing our direction as a team, that's going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we aren't discouraged by it, but obviously we know we have some things to work on. Yeah. Well, one one of the real positives I think uh, here in the early going for you, 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 the team has had some success on the power play. Uh, you know, is, is that uh, it seems like uh, that's been a an area of a, a lot of improvement. But uh, you you tell me, you've been on the power play now for a few seasons. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously pretty frustrating when they aren't going in for you when you uh, have that extra guy out. So it's really exciting that they are right now, and hopefully we can keep that rolling and just keep building on that. Uh, the, this weekend, uh, you know, the, the, the schedulers in the WCHA didn't do you a, a ton of favors. You, uh, you bet back into the frying pan with, with Wisconsin coming here. But uh, I, know, I know that, the, you know, it's a team in the past that, you know, you, you guys have played them pretty tough at different points. Uh, what, what kind of, uh, you know, series are you expecting with Wisconsin this weekend? Yeah, you know what? I kind of, I like personally getting to have a bunch of the tough teams uh, first because, it gives us a good taste of where we need to be and what we need to get to by the time that we uh, get to tournament time. And honestly, I think with how much our team has changed, it gives us a good chance to surprise those teams right off the bat. Um, but no, we know that they're a high skilled team. We'll have to play them physical. We'll have to make them play how they don't want to play. Um, and we have to outwork them. And that's just going to be number one. Yeah. Uh, have there been a, you know, have there been a few points of emphasis, you know, typically, you know, you, you go through a, a weekend coach finds a, you know, a, a few things maybe that, that are kind of focal points. It seems like, uh, you know, for, for the team this week, uh, have, there, have there been a few areas, I guess, that you guys have been working on a little bit more? Or? Yeah, I think a big part is working on making sure that we're getting pucks out. That's a, it kind of starts everything. It starts all of your offense. So if we can't get pucks out, we can't get down to there and to play. So I think that'll be a big part of this weekend. We know that they're going to come hard at us. So I think that we have to put the pressure on them just as much as they're going on us. Uh, you, you led the team in, in, in points last season. You're, you're back uh, leading the team uh, in, in points this season. Uh, you know, it, each season you, you've gotten a little bit better, a little bit better. Uh, you know, for, for you, I guess, during the off season, uh, are, are, were there a few things, I guess, that you worked on, I guess, in preparation to maybe take it up even another level here this season, Taylor? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously everyone trains in the off season a bit different than they do during the season, but I think just working on overall conditioning again in the summer, that's something that I think is a really big part of my game. Anyone who watches my game, it's... <laughs> It's a fast and hard game. Um, it's maybe not the most skilled, but that's how I like to play. And so I think just keeping working on that, getting stronger and building as much puck handling skills as I can, working on my shot and yeah, just overall everything. My confidence is a big thing that I've been trying to work on too. How do you, you know, how, how, how do you work on that? Uh, you know, are, are, are there, you know, different things I guess that you could work on during the off season to, to try and to, to do that because you know obviously I mean you can't really simulate a, a game experience uh you know how, how, how do you work on something like that during the off season <laughs> that's a really good question <laughs> um honestly I think the biggest way that I've been doing is working on my weak points and not so that I'm not worried that when I do get pressured in a situation and that I'm not questioning myself, that I know that I can do that skill. I know that I can get a puck out. I know I can get a puck on net. 
I can beat a defender. I can pin anyone I need to. So I think it's just working on the little things that I question myself on so that I don't question myself anymore. Yeah. Is it, you know, I mean, as you're looking at, at yourself, you know, over the, over your career here at St. Cloud State, I mean, is, is that where the greatest progression has come, I guess, is just in terms of, you know, the physical abilities might, might be, it might've been there kind of all along, but I mean, is it just the, is it the mental side that kind of keeps moving you forward? Yeah. I think that that's a big part of my game. That's uh, grown as I've been here. And I think that's a lot along your college uh, path I think that happens for a lot of people that they they just get more comfortable in the game it's not obviously you get better but I think that your confidence in yourself is one of the biggest parts of that when you're jumping from a league that that's that's that much better yeah Uh, you you mentioned a kind of a new look with with the team this season obviously one one of the one of the big changes uh, for this team is a, a new head coach and Brian Adalski uh, just describe from your perspective, I guess, uh, some some things that have stood out, I guess, in, in the early going, just in, in being around Coach Adolski. I mean, we've been working hard since day one. Uh, it's crazy. If you walk into the rink, it looks like a whole nother team. I mean, practices are high paced all the time. We're working as hard as we can. I mean, that's what we can give every day. So whether you're on 100%, you can always work your hardest. And I think that's a big thing that we've kind of, that's been preached to us since we've been here this year. Um, there's been lots of new systems that we that we've implemented. So I think working on that and nailing down our jobs has been another thing that we've worked towards, but yeah, just making sure that we come to the rank and we're giving our full efforts and that's physically and mentally. Uh, you know, w- with any new coach, I mean, the big thing is, you know, how do they, how do they connect with, you know, with, with the players, you know, uh, what are some ways, I guess, that, that the coaches tried to connect with all of you and, you know, try to get this, this group kind of together? Yeah, I mean, as soon as uh, Coach Brian got into the position this summer, he got in contact with all of us and kind of felt out what the team, where we were at, where we felt we needed to go, what we each individually thought could get us there. And ever since we've all been back, we've been having meetings constantly with our, with the leadership group, with the captains, with the seniors, just everyone talking together of what we think we need to do to get to the next level. And it, I I mean, it's like conversations with everyone. It's not like it's just one or two people. And I think that's a big part of it is that if we want to get there, we need everyone to buy in. Yeah. Uh, what did it mean to you? You got named, uh, you know, one of the team's captains. Uh, what, what did that mean to you? I guess when you found out about it. Yeah, that's super exciting. I mean, looking at the people who have been captains since I've been here, they've all been people that I look up to and admire so much. I mean, Janine, Poe, Kenzie, uh, Laura, Abby, all the A's and C's that have been here since I have. It's unbelievable. They've all left such an impact and I just hope that I can do something like that uh, you know for, for you I mean have, have, have you been in that position before I mean have, have you been a captain on uh, you know previous teams before you got to St. Cloud State or yeah I've been uh I've wore letters quite a bit on my way up through uh minor hockey but I feel like it's it just means even that much more being in a program like this we uh, d- describe, you know, you know, from your perspective, you know, what, how, how you kind of lead this team, you know, because obviously it's a great honor, but there's also more responsibility that goes with it. Uh, from your perspective, I guess, what have you tried to do in, in, in that new role for you? Yeah, I mean, we're kind of in an awkward spot right now with the, uh, the coaching change and the role shift of what, where we want to take this program culturally. So I think lots of it is leading by example right now and showing the girls what I think the program needs to look like what it takes to be an elite athlete um I mean I want to say I try to do everything to the best that I can so that everyone sees that that's the way it needs to go and I hope that I do the best job of that that I can yeah are are, are you are you somebody who's vocal I mean will, will you you know talk to the to the team and you know and try and kind of rally everybody that yeah way. I'm a pretty vocal person you can probably <laughs> hear me from the stands or anywhere in the rink when I'm on the ice but yeah I like to talk things through all the time I mean 
that's kind of just my character. I like to talk about whether things are going good, whether things are going bad, what we can work on to do better, what goes well. I mean, that's just how I debrief every situation. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, did, did you play other sports growing up or, or was it just, you know, I mean, obviously you get, you got, you know, very involved in hockey and stuff, uh, you know, at an early age, but uh, were, were there other sports for you as well? I, I tried just about every sport I could have. I did track. I did volleyball, basketball, softball. I did soccer when I was little. I did dance when I was little. I, what else did we have? Curled a bit. I, I did just about all of it. <laughs> what, what's kind of your second favorite then? You know, is, is there one out of that group, I guess, that kind of stands out for you that, uh, um, there's probably two that are tied. I, I'm a really big runner. I like my distance runs and I still like to run to this day. So I, I'd have to say track somewhat. And then I'd also have to say softball. Cause when I go home in the Springs, I, I still like to uh, play as much as I can just in the women's league and pick it up where I left off a little. I mean, obviously nothing too competitive, but I do like to get out and be active that way. Yeah. What, what position did you play in softball then? Um, I caught okay well there's that's not a low that's not a low impact position i mean did 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 you like that part of it though i mean did you like kind of the you know being involved with you know every pitch and and that sort of thing yeah i like being in the action i don't like getting bored that's why i play hockey (laughs) (laughs) i like being busy and right in everything no, no, you're talking about distance running. I mean, that's a that's a little bit different thing. I mean, uh, where, where you're kind of out on your own, uh, you know, you, I mean, obviously you can do that with friends and, and stuff, but a lot of times uh, you, you're probably out there on, on your own kind of venturing out. Uh, do you like that because it's a, a little bit of a departure from all the, all the other stuff? Or Totally, yeah. It's very clarifying for me running. Even I like to use that as a training method, and I know it's, sometimes frowned upon to be a distance runner when you're a hockey athlete it's a bit contradicting but I find that's the the thing that's best to uh mentally reset me and get me ready for what I need to do it kind of just lets me get away from if I've had a long day or whatnot and reset for the rink and get ready yeah now have you done any uh you know road races that sort of thing you gone 5k or anything like that or I actually haven't. Me and uh, Yanina were talking about doing the Earth Day half marathon, I think they have in St. Cloud. Yes. We're talking about it last year, but we ended up not getting registered in time. So, I mean, that's something that I think we'll definitely be looking into a bit earlier this year. No, no, that's not a short distance. I mean, we're (laughs) talking 13 miles. I mean, uh, have have you been out that far? (laughs) We, uh, I haven't ever ran anywhere close to that, actually, but we... (laughs) We did walk a, uh, uh, I think we walked the half marathon last fall. So that's something that we'd have to get training for after the season and whatnot. But I don't know, I'd be interested in trying it just to know that I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it may be a heck of an accomplishment. It's something, uh, you know, I, it's funny that you bring up distance running because I, uh, I ran cross country in high school and stuff. So uh, I, I have some experience with that. So it's a, uh, I, it, it's something that, uh, yeah, I mean, the 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 the, uh, the mental side of that is probably, you know, is as challenging as the physical side of it, I think. But uh, I don't know if you felt the same way. Yeah, totally. I feel like you tell yourself how tired you are in your head about ten times before your legs are like, okay, can we slow down yet? But <laughs> no, yeah, I enjoy it. Uh, we, we were talking a little bit beforehand and, and, and last year we, we talked a little bit about this, but you're from a, a very big hockey, well, you're, you're from a very hockey oriented family. Uh, you know, your, your older brother, uh, Cole, uh, uh spent some time, uh, got, got a chance to play at the Seattle Kraken, uh, last season. I know he's back, uh, in, in the organization again, this season, um, were you able to go and, uh, you know, see him play at all, or did you just watch him on TV a few times? Yeah, so he actually ended up playing in the cities last year while I was still here. So I got to go and see him for the first time ever live then. Um, My family all, they got to go to his, uh, the, they all got to go to Calgary to watch him. So I kind of missed out being at that game with all them watching him for the first time. But it was still so cool. Me and Yanina went and watched him in Minneapolis and oh, it was 
neat. It was so good to talk to him after too and catch up and just hear how things were going. That that has to be a kind of a surreal moment. I mean, to, to see a sibling uh, of yours uh, playing in an NHL game. Uh, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but I, I can't even imagine what that's like. It was nuts. Like my mom had told me on the phone, she's like, Taylor, you're not even gonna, like, it's crazy. You won't even believe it while you're watching. And I was kind of like, yeah, I mean, I've watched him on TV quite a few times now. It'll be fine. But when I, it was, yeah, I couldn't believe it. Like seeing his jersey actually out there was, it was so cool. I was so happy for him. Now, did you get one of his jerseys in for yourself? Do you, do you have yeah, I, I did. I do have one. <laughs> It was, those jerseys aren't too bad either. They're pretty nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. How, how often, uh, you know, are, are you in contact with them? I mean, you know, during the off season, did, did, did you see him a little bit, I guess, during the off season or, or, uh, you know, were you able to kind of get together at all or. Yeah. So me and my family lives in a small town, Shonovan. Um, but there's no ice around there really in the summers. So Cole and his girlfriend had bought a house in Saskatoon and that's where their home is. So me and my little brother actually moved up with Cole and his girlfriend and lived there in the summers during the weeks to train. So, uh, yeah, we all saw plenty of each other. (laughs) (laughs) What, uh, you know, was that, is that helpful? I mean, you know, just, you know, training, getting a chance to train with, with your brothers like that. Oh, it's, it's yeah. Second to none. I mean, getting to watch the high intensity that, that they train at and the high competition around all the time I mean they even skate so the rink that we skate at there's like two ice surfaces and you can see through like on each end there's opening doors and you can Colt my older brother would skate at the same time as me so you'd get kind of get to watch him sometimes during reps and it's it's so cool I'm so blessed to get the chance to do things like that uh, no, you were talking about uh, your, your younger brother. Your younger brother is Kalen, and he's a 17-year-old uh, forward. He's playing for Swift Current uh, in, in the WHL. Uh, uh, how, how, how are things going for, for Kalen right now? Yeah, he's playing for Red Deer, actually. Oh, but excuse me. Okay. Yeah, things are really well. He's having a good season so far. I mean, I think this is a big one for him, so I think he's just – trying to keep all the pressure off him and just play each game just how he always does hard and I think he plays a bit more like me than he plays like my other siblings so that's kind of cool to get to watch how hard he plays and I mean I admire him every time he's on the ice the things that he can do are really cool and I hope all the he gets all the chances in the world yeah uh do you get a chance to watch him then online at all? I mean, does the WHL have some some ways that you can watch them? Yeah, so they stream through the CHL, so I get to watch almost every game. And with our game times and uh, the time zone change, basically after all my games, their game's just starting by the time I get home. So I get home, kick my feet up, and watch that for the night and reset. It's it's awesome. <laughs> Now, do, now, if you're on the road, then do, will your teammates kind of come and watch with you at all? Or, you, or is that kind of your own thing? Yeah, well, me and Yanina are actually roommates and roommates at home and on the road. And she watches at home. She watches on the road. It's it's really cool. So, yeah, no, me and her usually watch together. Sometimes Al comes and watches his games with us. But, no, it's pretty special. Yeah. Uh, is is Cole a different well is he got a little bit different style of play than than maybe you and your other brother then or you know yeah Cole was he was kind of always more of like a bit of a different game but he he can play whatever role he needs to so I mean he doesn't have to be too worried about that <laughs> uh now do you have other siblings or just the the your, the, your two brothers then yeah, so I have an older sister. She is 15 months older than me. So she's the second born. And she used to play for the U of L for their U sports team, but she uh the program got cut, so she no longer plays. She plays junior girls still in Lethbridge, and this will be her last season. Okay. Uh, now, how, how do your parents keep up with all of you? I guess that's my next question. Is how, do they try to, or I mean, how, how, how do they do it? They do a phenomenal job. I don't know how they do it, but <laughs> yeah, they're, they'll sometimes have three games to watch a day and they'll somehow do all of them. But 
yeah, no, whether they're coming, they always usually try to get down to me once or twice. And when they come see me, then they try to stop and see Cole on the way. And they obviously have a billet house in Red Deer. So they house my little brother and two of his teammates. So when they come visit us, they have to make sure that my little brother and his teammates are on the road, but they do such a good job and they get out to see Tanel too. So it's wonderful. I, I admire them for it. Cause I don't know if I'll be able to do it like that. No. So are, so are they host? are they hosting your brother then as a, as a bill of family then? Yep, they are. Wow. So th- now that's a lot to take on as well. I mean, if, if he's got teammates moved in too. Yes, for sure. <laughs> what, do, what do they do for a living then? I mean, how are they able to manage all of this? Um, so my mom used to be a financial advisor. She's retired now and works. We have a family farm. So that helps a bit. Dad doesn't usually get down to Red Deer until we're done harvest and winterized for the year, but he's down there full time now. And I mean, they have to make a trip, a few trips back during the season just to when they have trucks coming and whatnot, but they do a really good job managing their time. <laughs> No, when when you go back home, then do you, do you automatically have to start doing chores? Then I mean, if, uh, on the farm, or, or how's that work? <laughs> yeah, we have to do a bit of chores. I mean, I think me and my little brother get the uh, the short end of the stick by all means. <laughs> um, last year, yeah, about the first, or I think it was the first week we were back from Red Deer. Me and him were cleaning out bins, and if that is how has to be one of the worst jobs of all time <laughs> between that and picking trees there's not a whole lot that come close <laughs> make makes you appreciate the hockey side of it a little bit more then right yes <laughs> now uh you know d- during the off season do you spend all the, the whole summer up uh, up in canada then or will you come back down a little bit uh, during the off season Yeah, you know, my off time, that's something that I really cherish is spending time with my family and friends. I mean, it's a really big sacrifice and I totally would do it in a heartbeat every single year to come down here and get to play. But that time that I do get off, I do enjoy being around them and spending that special time together. Yeah, Uh, you know, growing up, you know, here, obviously with with the visual and men's hockey, people understand, you know, junior hockey. So when you're talking about your brothers playing major junior, people have a good idea about that but you know for for women and, and and girls growing up I mean what what's what's the situation like for for you know just going out and playing then you will you play you know were, were you on teams I guess where you played a, a ton of games or, or how much travel was involved what, what was that like you know yeah it was hard I think one of the hardest parts of it was we didn't really like I knew I wanted to play division one hockey since I was in about peewee, but I didn't even know what it was until about peewee because I'm from Canada and it's to start with, like, that's not, you don't get to watch. I never got to watch any on TV because those games were never aired. So, I mean, until I played boys hockey until first year midget. So till about U 18s. And then once I got in, we have like, we had a Saskatchewan league. So it wasn't bad. There was about six teams and it was competitive and it was awesome. We have, I have lots of girls who are in division one hockey against me now that I used to play against. And it was a really competitive league, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how the game's growing because there wasn't all that much to look up to when we were younger. And so with these new leagues coming out for pro hockey and girls getting to watch games on national television and stuff. I think that that's definitely promoting the game in a right way. Yeah. Uh, Now you've got a number of of teammates who, who are, are playing on, on their national team and stuff. And uh, obviously with the, the competition to play for Canada, it's pretty brisk. Uh, You know, would would that be kind of the ultimate for you though? I mean, if you, if you ever got a chance to to do something like that. Yeah. You know, that's been my dream since I was in, since forever but yeah I mean that was something that I really had a focal point on when I was younger and that was one of my biggest goals and I think it obviously still is that's something that I'll always want to do and it'll be a dream of mine until I'm done playing but I think also 
I kind of like to focus on being in the moment now and just being happy getting to play division one hockey and wanting to be my best player. And if that doesn't include national team for me, then that doesn't. And that's something I've came to terms with, but yeah, I mean, obviously I'd love to, if the opportunity ever came about. Yeah. Uh, what, what are you majoring in and how much school have you got left? Um, so I'm an elementary education major and I should be done that this spring. And then if I come back for my fifth year, I think I'm going to try double major, just depending on how things would pan out. What, what would be the second major? Do you have any idea or not? I'm not too sure. I think it might be a Bachelor of Elective Studies if that works out. I'm still trying to work some things out with my advisor, talking things over if that's an option. But what, what are things that are, you know, because a number of, of, of players you now on, on, on your roster have, have come back for their their fifth season uh you know what are some factors i guess for you as to you know what are you going to be weighing i guess when you when you get to, to, to making that decision you know i think it's always hard to leave home for me i have a really tough time leaving home i i love things here but i do love being with my family and getting to spend that time with them um i think another part is how long I want to be in school for. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously I want to play hockey till I can't, but it's, it's a, ha it's a happy medium, but yeah. Do, do you want to try and play hockey after college or? Um, I'd like to see what opportunities I get and go from there. Yeah. What, uh, you, you know, what, what was it like for you, you know, uh, just watching, you know, some of your teammates play in the world championships, play in, in the Olympic games, uh, I, I, I can't even imagine you were talking about how close you and Yanina are. Uh, what's it like to see her play for, for team Finland, for example? It's, it's nuts. I like, I can't put it into words, like getting to say, and even Clara, we were freshman year roommates and like two of my best friends have been in the Olympics. It's crazy to say and try to comprehend and wrap my head around, but like watching them and just, watching their dreams come true it's it's surreal it's so exciting i yeah i can't even summarize it it's amazing yeah it's so exciting getting to watch their dreams come true how, how much is that you know how much has that helped your game just being around you know players that obviously have, you know are playing at the at the top level and you, you get a chance to see that every you know it, it does that rub off on you i mean you know are there things that you pick up every day from them Oh, for sure. I, I'm a strong believer that you pick up habits from the people that you're around and my work ethic, it's pushed every day by Yanina and Clara. They, they're hard workers at the rink. They're hard workers away from the rink. I mean, Yanina, she's really taught me how to be an athlete away from the rink. And that's something that I'm very thankful for. She, she models that so well. And I think that that gives me a good chance to, uh, to live that way as well. Yeah. What, uh, you, you know, going into a season, you know, different players that have different ways of measuring things, you know, I mean, everybody wants to be getting better, you know, are, are, are there things, I guess, that you set out, I guess, for yourself going into the season that you wanted to accomplish, uh, you know, this season uh, versus, say, last season or, or whatever? Yeah, I mean, obviously, one of the biggest things for me is I want our team wins to go up. I, I think that I like to, I like to think that I'm a part of that in a just as big of a way as anyone else. But I mean, I think that's something that I, I want to measure my personal success by how our team does. I, I think this is a year that we can do something special for this program and get it going in the right way. Um, and yeah, I think that's the biggest way that I'd like to measure success this year awesome well taylor i really appreciate uh, you taking some time want to wish you all the best here uh, up up against wisconsin this weekend and uh thanks so much for taking some time and best of luck yeah no thank you for having me it was great to catch up mac yeah uh that's taylor lynn from the st cloud state uh, women's hockey team i'm mick from the rink live please check out all of our great content here on the website <laughs>